So before I start, you need to bear in mind this is seven years of pent up bile that I'm going to share. With you. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you today about my reflections on place based engagement, but mainly based on my experience of working in UK, please. Now, by way of a spoiler alert, a bit like the leveling of white paper, this will be strong on analysis, but not so strong on tangible solutions. <laughs> if it's good enough for Michael, it's good enough for me. What I want to talk about is geography. And I'm starting here because it can be an obsession for both local councils and officials whenever we embark on a conversation about place for citizens. So let's think about some set definitions of place. We've got our region, constituencies, different councils, different wards, networks, partnership, catchment areas, and many, many more. It's sort of a rich sort of mix of history, bureaucracy, custom and practice. Some are based on representative democracy, some on the deployment resources, some on pure bloody madness. And, and I think this is a chaotic and confused landscape that often forms our starting point for engaging with citizens. Now, I believe in genuine engagement in places. It is the way we will bridge participatory and representative democracy in a way that's a win-win for both. It's how we will co-produce and deliver better outcomes with citizens. But in my experience, these formal and artificial definitions of geography can be a real barrier to this happening. I think this is because citizens are dynamic, citizens are fluid and complex. We don't sit neatly in a geographical boundary, do we? As citizens, we constantly move on journeys through our lives. So for example, today I'm a visitor to Kirk Police. I've got a stake here. I care about the transport connections, how easy it is to find the university, a good place to get a cup of coffee, things to see while I'm here, and how safe I feel. Today I am a citizen of Woodsfield Town Centre. Where I live in Barnsley, I have had a stake in the local schools when the children were there. Now my focus is on local employment because of the working age and then affordable housing. At election time, I care passionately about who I vote for and how they will represent me for the next four years or so. Now in all of those interactions, my engagement is not principally driven by the geography. It's more fluid, complex and granular. Now, I know all this might be obvious, but now let's think about how some of this plays out when organisations like councils embark on engaging with citizens in places. I believe that the obsession with established geography often gets in the way of this. So let's start with councillors. Even if we accept that electoral wards should be the building block for citizen engagement, we've set councils up to fail from the start because the geography is way too large. So in some of the wards in Kirklees, we have three councillors representing over 15,000 citizens. I know that achievable representation is a wider discussion, but, but I think you begin to get the point. So let's consider about what actually happens when we embark on place-based engagement in electoral wards. Party politics, especially in cross-party wards, is a real issue. Political competition, whether we like it or not, can impact on citizen involvement. Because so many times I've witnessed citizen energy fade as politicians politicise engagement. They can turn it into a beauty contest or a land grab for resources to improve personal standing. I'm not saying this is typical, there's some brilliant councils out there, there's some brilliant councils in this room, but trust me, it does happen. Now, in many respects, this is hard for citizens whose sense of place inevitably spans across representational boundaries. It demands a sense of shared collaboration by councillors, some of whom aren't comfortable with it. I think then when we add to this, we've got the TikTok of the electoral cycle. Here in Kirk Lease, for example, local elections take place three out of every four years. This means that our politicians are permanently in an electioneering mindset. It's therefore not surprising that party politics is pervasive and politicians focus on war boundaries. Citizen engagement's got to be something that's ongoing, but the stop start of an electoral cycle cuts right across this. The net result is that momentum can be lost, the engagement journey is broken and citizen energy wanes. Or even worse, citizens begin to vote with a fee. Now, turning to council offices, but let's not forget that's a club I was a member of for 31 years. <clears throat> um, there is still a general service based culture within councils of consultation, not engagement. Citizens are presented with a range of options on the thing, picked up, dropped, and a predetermined decision is implemented anyway. Now, these interactions are often shaped by technical operational geographies, not by citizens. It's important because officers have had so many opportunities to initiate place-based engagement, but they miss it. They will consult about a planning application or a road scheme, but will miss the chance to engage on the wider place 
which is affected by those plans. This situation is compounded by having a narrow approach to budgeting. It always makes technical consultation the easiest option. We all know that complex challenges in local places need collaborative and imaginative responses, but service culture has very little perspective in this place. And also remember, technical officers rarely do the actual engagement. That's for that small group of experts that sit somewhere in the organisation. The net result is that councils choose consultation because it's quicker, cheaper and easier. But mainly, let's not forget, it, it can be quite crap. Um, <laughs> So in summer, we've got many geographies that quite often citizens don't identify with and councillors struggle to represent. We've got party politics, cross ward issues and the electoral cycle compound that situation. And also these geographies pull offices in different directions. It becomes service delivery versus meaningful place based engagement. So you can please know that's the analysis over. But being an eternal optimist and hoping to be a little bit less Michael Gove, I offer the following messages. So for me, council, for councils, the job of government is to trust citizens. And the way for this to happen is to make genuine place-based citizen engagement the backbone of all that you do. Make it your defining culture, building on a lot of the great work that's already out there. But this means accepting the fluidity of geography from a citizen perspective. Align services, budgets and performance targets in a much more place-based way. Enable officers to understand engagement instead of being forced down the consultation route. Make engagement a core skill set for council officers and make sure they have the chance to use it. Because if we leave engagement to the little team in the distant corner of the organisation, we won't change the culture. All council officers should be routinely working with citizens to develop a shared view of their challenges and aspirations. For councillors, how about leaving part politics for the council chamber? Don't be principally driven by war geographies and electoral cycles. Enable and facilitate place-based engagement as a conduit between citizens and the council. But this will involve working across artificial boundaries, not getting the credit and often seeding control. Genuinely trust citizens and give them the tools and the credit. The council officers tear up your operational geographies. They only lead you further down the route of consultation. Value technical skills, but don't hold be driven by them. Get out there and engage with the citizens that you work for, because it will enrich the work that you do and show the difference that you can make. And finally, as with all of these things, it's sort of always about leaders creating conditions for citizens to lead. And I think local government leaders could do worse than consider a quote that I'll leave you with. If you want to lead the people, find out what direction they're going in and then get in front of them. Thank you.